Warning. This podcast may prove to be damaging to the comfort of closely held presuppositions. Remember to practice Acts 17.11 and examine the scriptures daily to see whether these things are so. is changing rapidly. Wars and rumors of wars are abundant. Civil unrest, economic collapse, a global economic reset, natural disasters, and the second coming of Jesus Christ is on the horizon. Are you prepared? Welcome to Truth Fed. So this is a terrifying time. You've got to take heed that no man deceive you. And every one of us better be coming out of the darkness now. Because the church is in compromise. I know what it means to walk with the Lord. I know what it means to walk in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Have angels come into my house. I can see their eyes blazing golden fire. They speak and their voices sound like trumpets. I know what it means to walk in the Holy of Holies. And I know what it means to walk in the outer court of compromise. And the outer court is going to be burned to the ground. And the people that dwell there are going to get purified in the fire if they really belong to the Lord. I've seen this fire. I've been there. I've done that. And it's the reason I'm so adamant to warn the church. And the church is sitting back thinking, well, you know, we're all going to just go in the great by and by, not realizing, read the whole Bible, people. Be the Bereans you were supposed to be. The judgment of God begins in his house. We've got to be counted worthy to escape these things. We don't just get there with our sin. You can't keep your sin if you want to walk with him. And much of the church is walking under complete deception, walking in absolute compromise. And what is the worst sin in the book? What is the number one abomination in Holy Scripture? God said pride. He put it on the list of murdering innocent children. And what is it that this generation is full of? Pride, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, and the fullness of sin and compromise in the house of God. And the Lord told me, and I've been able to hear from the Lord, and don't take my word for it, test it in prayer, and test what I say in the scriptures. But my witness is faithful and true. The Lord said to me, my people are ignorant in word, immature in their faith, yet arrogant in pride. They are full of themselves, but I will empty them out. But before God gets ready to empty out the church, he sent his final warning to his people to try to awaken the sleeping, compromised church before they go into a fire that is so hot, I can only describe it as an iron brush and a blowtorch. But if that's what it takes to clean us up, if God's called you to the wedding feast, you've got to have robes that are white, and the Lord will do anything to save you. Look what he did to Jesus. Jesus endured the cross so that we could be saved. And God is willing to put us in the fire as well. Greetings and welcome back to the broadcast. Today is Sunday, May 10th, 2015, and I hope you're all enjoying and having a wonderful Mother's Day. I'm Sean, and the website is www.truthfed.com. Dot com. Strong words and a strong warning to the church. That was Benjamin Birch. Hopefully I'm pronouncing his name right. And hopefully that's someone I could try to get on this, uh, try to get on the show here in the near future. And as always, I'll leave a post to the full interview on the website at www.truthfed.com. Now, one of my missions with this whole work that is known as Truth Fed, uh, in general, is to wake people up, to help pull down the veil and remove the blindness, and to show people that we are living in the last days, and more importantly, to show them, to lead them to the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the only name under heaven in which a man can be saved. And, you know, the warnings are all around us. The signs are so strong now, 
so ridiculously in your face now and getting more and more severe. And uh, I pray, I pray that God would just pour out his spirit upon this nation and wake up the lost and wake up the lukewarm church. The signs are everywhere, aren't they? I mean, record numbers of earthquakes. We had some 50 tornadoes the other day. On the 8th, so what, like two days ago, we had, or 7th, 7th or 8th, we had 11 large volcanic eruption all in one day. I mean, the whole earth is screaming that judgment is here. Not only do we have the blood moon tetrads, but we are now seeing unscheduled blood moons appearing all over the country. I don't know if you guys have seen this. I shared it on Facebook. There was three or four just last week, and that's just what I know of that I've seen photos of. Not only were they reported, but they were photographed. As a matter of fact, there was one in Indiana, and my mother took a picture of it and posted it online. You should be able to see that at uh, my Facebook page. And my friends, it was blood red. There was one in Texas, one in Kentucky. I mean, that's just downright freaking. I really haven't heard of anyone covering this yet, but uh, there's images out there, folks, and they were right here in the good old Indiana where I live. Uh, you know, it's time to make your home. It's time to pinch your tent with the Lord. And uh, like Mr. Barch, or Birch, however you pronounce his last name, said, the judgment is going to start in the house of God. That's biblical. So get your heart right now. Clean up your garments now. That is my prayer for all of you who listen to this show. You know, I pray before I do the show, number one, I pray that God would give me words to say. Because left to myself, my own problems, you know, being that I am a fallen human being, uh, I will lead all of you astray, so I pray that God would be, it'd be his words, not mine, and that he would give me the topics to talk about. And I just pray that those of you who hear this broadcast, who listen to this show, uh, that you would be changed, that it would pierce your hearts, that it would cause some to fall on your knees and to repent and be saved. And I don't know if that's been the case for anyone who's listened to this show, but that is definitely my prayer and my hope. My hope is to help you. Uh, and myself, believe me, when I do this podcast and I'm forced to study the Word of God, and uh, I don't want to use the word force, but you know, I have to dig in deep and I have to double check myself and kind of make sure that I'm going in the right direction. It, it's helped me grow uh, an incredible, I mean, just it's been amazing the last year and a half or so, um, just how much I've grown spiritually and just, you know, how much I've learned about God and about His Word and. Uh, I mean, just leaps and bounds, and I'm hoping that it's doing the same for you. That is, that's the goal. That's why I get behind here and do this, and this I plan on doing, folks, unless God comes down and says, stop, or I die, or uh, we are snatched away. Until those days come, I intend to continue with this work uh, as, long as, I, as long as it's humanly possible, and I hope that it's blessing all of you, um, you can reach out to me and share your story with me. I used to say email me, um, but email doesn't work as well. So I would prefer that you do it through, honestly, through Facebook. If you don't use Facebook, I understand. I hate it myself, but it, it seems to be the easiest route for all of this. Um, you can still email, email me, sean at truthfed.com. Um, but I'm more likely to be able to respond quickly and on the go and things like that uh, through something through Facebook. So um, you can do that by uh, going to facebook.com forward slash truthfed. And uh, so today we're going to continue our reading from the book of Revelation. Uh, we're going to be reading chapter 12. We'll be reading about the war that takes place in heaven and uh, where Satan is officially kicked out, where he no longer has access to heaven. We're going to have a conversation about that because many people don't understand that. Um, and uh, how he's thrown down the earth and then he releases his wrath on God's people because he knows that he has a short time. Now, before I start, I just want to remind you all these episodes, along with a lot of videos and other end time 
related information are posted at the website several times a week. It's a great place to find good resources. There's a search box on the right. Just type in whatever topic, and there's probably a video or something there to help you. Uh, and that's truthfed.com. Same thing for the Facebook page, which I just mentioned, facebook.com forward slash truthfed. And if you want to support the mission of truth, you can do that, and you can subscribe by going to truthfed.com forward slash help, and that goes to help pay for hosting, help upgrade and maintain recording equipment, computer equipment, things of that uh, nature. And you also get access to a monthly subscriber video where I basically go through and just kind of share some thoughts um, and give a personal thank you. And uh, that gets posted uh, once a month. And uh, hopefully this month should be released uh, by the end of the week. Uh, last month's been up there for some time and I don't think very many people have actually taken the time to log in and watch it. But if you're a subscriber, you get a username and log in and you can check those out. Uh, so now without further ado, Let's, uh, let's dig into this, this book of Revelation, the Revelation of Jesus Christ. I think one of the most important books to be reading at this point in time, one of the only books, the only book that says blessed, that says that you will be blessed, promises a blessing if you just read it and study it. Uh, and then we'll have a discussion about this uh, war and more about kind of Satan and uh, you know, his access to God, uh, because I think there's an interesting, some interesting thoughts about that that I want to share with all of you. So let's dig in. Let's read. This is a very short chapter. Uh, Revelation 12. It's about the woman, the child, and the dragon, Satan thrown out of heaven, and then the persecution of the woman. Uh, I, I wish I could tell you I understood everything going on here, folks, but I just don't. All I have is my own speculation. Uh, but my hope is that you'll hear the word of God and the Holy Spirit will confirm some things for you, speak to you, and uh, maybe even to me as well. So let's dig in. Revelation chapter 12. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God in his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that she should, f she should feed her there 1,260 days. A war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength, and the kingdom of God, and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child, but the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, and the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So there's a lot of going, things going on there and where there's a lot of speculation about time frames and things of that nature. And the truth is, is I don't know. Uh, it appears just at a first glance that we have a description of Satan ready to devour 
uh, who was to give birth uh, to the to the Christ child, which I think uh, when it's talking about the mother, I don't think it's referring to Mary, the, like the literal mother. I think it's referring to Israel. Uh, but anyway, obviously that didn't work. Um, and the child was eventually caught up to heaven in his throne. Um, and then you've got, and, I could, and folks, I could be wrong about what's taking place there. That's just a first glance, just kind of what I think. And then you've got this war that breaks out in heaven. I speculate, and, and again, I, I, I wish I knew for sure, folks, but this is a speculation. You'll have to discern and pray and really dig in. I mean, this kind of stuff requires great study, and we've studied it on this show for a long time, and I can't count how many times I've read the book of Revelation and, and things related to it, and it's, it's impossible to have it all figured out. Um, it's something that I think happens during the last days, uh, this great war in heaven where Satan is just officially banned from heaven. I don't think that that's happened yet. Um, now, it could ha- now, it could be, but I don't think so. And then when he gets here, when he's officially thrown down, and he knows he has no access to heaven anymore, that's when he, he pours out what the Bible says, For the devil has come down to you having great wrath. Why? Because he knows that he has a short time. Uh, some may speculate that this, is, had this happened long ago. Uh, but at any rate, he's going to persecute, um, I believe, the Israelites and anyone who has the testimony of Jesus Christ, uh, like it says. Could we be seeing that right now? Possible. Um, but it's hard to say. Now, we know that Satan has access to the earth and to God, at least at some point in history, where he can go from to or fro. He can come to the earth. He can come to to, to God. And he can come into heaven before God. And that seems strange to some people. Like, how could he have access to God? But we know that this is true. We have proof in other text, whereas here he's thrown out of heaven, which means to me he would no longer have access to it, nor would his angels. They'll all be cast here to earth, uh, which is really bad news for earth. So just a couple of examples that kind of show that Satan can come to the earth and he can, he can also uh, have access to God. We have Job as an example, the book of Job. If you just go to the very first chapter, just open it right up. Verse 6 says, Now there was a day when the sons of God Interesting, it uses the word sons of God, same terminology we have in Genesis 6, uh, when we have the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they took wives, and then we have the whole Nephilim thing and the giants that we've discussed many times on here, but nonetheless, let's get back on track here. So the sons of God, uh, so these watchers, these same uh, you know, angelic beings, came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came along with them. This is Job chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? And Satan answers the Lord, and he says, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. So Satan's, you know, Satan is here. He has access to God. God asked him where he came from, and he says, You know, I've been going back and forth, to and fro to the earth. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on earth, a blameless and upright man, who fears God and shuns evil? And Satan, being Satan, says to the Lord, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him and his household and around all that he has? And on every side you have blessed the work of his hands, and in his possessions have increased the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will surely curse you to your face. So Satan's saying, hey, you know what? Job's a godly man. He fears God, and he serves you because he's had a cushy life. But if he, you know, things get terrible for him, uh, he will curse you to his face, to your face. And then the Lord gives Satan permission and basically delivers Job and all that Job has into Satan's hands with the exception that he's not allowed to harm Job. And uh, you probably know the story of Job. If not, I recommend that you go read that. But the point is, is to get back to the conversation. Uh, It appears, according to the text, that Satan has access both to heaven and earth. And then we, in this book of Revelation here, in chapter 12, verse 7, uh, there's a war that breaks out, and Michael and his angels fight with Satan and all of Satan's uh, following and then there's no, after the war is over, they lose, clearly. Uh, and there's no place found for them in heaven any longer. And then the great dragon's cast out. And then he, and this, and it gives you a description who the great dragon is, devil and Satan, 
the guy who deceives the whole world. Him and his angels are cast out of heaven. We have another example of this in the book of Jasher. Uh, which some of you might find interesting. You probably, many of you probably haven't heard this story before. And this is uh, chapter 22, verse 46, if you want to go check it out for yourself. Uh, this is uh, giving us giving some background, giving some more information about Abraham. Abraham. And the day it says, The day arrived when the sons of God, there's the sons of God again, came and placed themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with him with the sons of God before the Lord. So we have the same situation. So who knows how many times in history, how many times a week, who knows how many times a month this happens where Satan and some sons of God be- present themselves before the Lord. And, and what do they do? They start, uh, you know, calling out God's people, um, you know, uh, saying, look at what so-and-so has done. You know, the only reason so-and-so follows you is because you've blessed him, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so verse 46, you know, you like, same situation we saw in the book of Job. Then verse 47, it says, and the Lord said unto Satan, Where have you come? And Satan said, From going to and fro the earth, and walking up and down. That same situation here. And the Lord said to Satan, Why is thy word to me concerning all the children of the earth? And Satan answered the Lord and said, I have seen all the children of the earth who serve thee. That's interesting that Satan's paying attention to all the children of the earth who serve God. He's watching them. And remember thee when they require anything from thee. And when thou givest them the thing which they require from thee, they sit there in ease and forsake thee and remember thee no more. Satan's saying, you know what? They come to you because they need something, and then when you, you know, give them what they need, provide for them, then they don't care about you anymore. Hast thou seen Abraham the son of Terah, who at first had no children, and he served thee and erected altars to thee wherever he came, and he He brought up offerings upon them, and he proclaimed thy name continually, all the children of the earth. And now that he, now that his son Isaac is born to him, he has forsaken thee. He has made a great feast for all the inhabitants of the land, and the Lord has forgotten. For amidst all that he has done, he brought thee no offerings, neither burnt offerings, nor peace offerings, nor an ox, nor a lamb, nor a goat, and all that he killed on the day that his son was weaned. So basically, what Satan's doing is he's going back and forth from the earth. He comes before God along with the sons of God, and he says, you know what? Abraham, you know, he's supposed to be this, you know, you've got all these great plans for Abraham, but, you know, now that you've given him this son Isaac, he no longer cares for you. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't do any offerings to you anymore. He's forgotten about you, God. And then what happens after this, which is interesting because we don't see this part recorded in Genesis. Uh, Basically... The story goes on to uh, say, you know, that basically it leads up to Abraham taking Isaac up the mountain to sacrifice him. You know, God's proving that Abraham doesn't love Isaac more than more than God, and that Abraham's not withholding anything from God. You know, it's the same situation that we saw with Job. You know, Job's like, or Satan's like, yeah, you take everything Job has and he'll curse you to your face. Well, if you take Abraham's son away from him, he'll curse you to your face. And then we all know the story, you know. Abraham takes his son up up there. And uh, there's a lot more to this story in the book of Jasher. Highly recommend you check it out after you've done a good study of the Genesis, of what takes place in Genesis. And then this kind of fills in a lot of gaps for you. But nonetheless, the whole point that we're making here is that at least at some point in time, Satan has had access to not just the earth, but the throne room of God as well. We speculate that he probably has uh, that same access until we have this event that takes place in what we just read in Revelation, where he is thrown out, him and his angels, and they're cast down to the earth, and then Satan's wrath gets poured out upon the earth, and great persecution comes amongst God's people and anyone who has the testimony of Jesus Christ, and those days are here. I believe they are upon us. Now, has this war taken place? I don't know. But what I do know is that this great persecution is coming, and we need to get our garments cleaned. I believe God will, you know, that he may uh, persevere, you know, he may preserve his bride. He may preserve a remnant. I, I don't know what God's going to do in the midst of this. What I do know is right now there's great persecution already taking place in other parts of the world, my friends. Yes, we may get raptured tonight. It may happen. I pray to the Lord that it does. We need to be praying the prayer in Luke. Lord God, count us worthy. 
worthy to escape all the things coming upon this earth and to stand before the Son of Man. But we also need to be prepared that things are getting hairy, and we need to be warning our brothers and sisters. We need to be praying for those who are suffering for the Word of God and for the name of Jesus. And we need to wake up the church in some fashion. Maybe it's just one person that you reach in your family. Maybe it's just four or five people you reach in your church. But the reality is, is this stuff is coming down. And we have this adversary, the devil, who day and night, day and night, it says, accuses us before God. The good news, my friends. And it's best said in 1 John. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Satan may accuse us before God, but if we are in Jesus, we have an advocate with the Father. That is the broadcast for today. I pray that it blesses you. And I hope that maybe some of this information I shared with you is at the very least, interesting and informative for you and give you something to chew on, something to think about. As always, I'm always open to hear your opinions on this verse, on chapter 12. Please share them. Uh, Just remember to be polite and godly when sharing your opinion. Um, If you have a different opinion than mine, I'm more than open to hear it, and you can share it in the comments. Uh, Just please don't come to the comments telling me how brilliant you are and how stupid I am. Uh, you know, I'm not going to pay a whole lot of attention uh, to that type of comment. So anyway, that is the show for today. I hope that it blessed you. New one will be out uh, probably Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, that's kind of the schedule that we're on. Sunday nights, Wednesday or Thursday. We'll probably start adding in even another third episode. I'm still trying to get my bearings, get my, you know, get my feet grounded on uh, time management now that I have this uh, other th- you know, I had this new job going on, plus doing the podcast, plus being a father and a husband and, uh, you know, volunteer work and all the things that I'm involved in. You know how it is. You know how the busy world is, how the busy life is. Uh, but I'm making sure, making sure that I put aside the time uh, to try to minister to you all, uh, which in turn ministers to me as well. So peace and grace be with all of you. And God bless. <laughs>